In this short video, I will explain how to interface a joystick on the STM32L4 Discovery Kit by programming GPI opens as digital input. The STM32L4 Reference Manual and the schematic diagram of STM32L4 Discovery Kit are two very helpful documents for this lecture. While the reference manual is long, you do not have to read it chapter by chapter. Embedded system engineers need to learn how to navigate the reference manual to quickly identify the relevant information. The STM32L4 Discovery Kit has a four direction joystick. The user may push the joystick in one of four directions up, down, left, and right. The user may also press the center of the joystick. The center is often used as a selector. Here is the schematic diagram, which shows the connections between the processor pins and the joystick. GPIO pins PA0, PA1, PA5, PA2, PA3 are connected to the center, left, down, right, and up pin of the joystick, respectively. Each pin is connected to the ground, via a capacitor. The purpose of these capacitors is to perform hardware debouncing. When pressed, the switch within the joystick may bounce back and forth a few times before settling down. The bounce is usually settled within 20 milliseconds. A capacitor can filter out any quick changes in a signal. Therefore, the capacitor can remove the bounces or glitches associated with switch transitions. Here is the internal diagram of the joystick. It has five switches. The common terminal is connected to the positive 3 volt. In this lecture, we will write a software program to detect whether the center of the joystick is pressed. When the user presses the center of the joystick, this center switch is then closed. As a result, pin PA0 is then connected to the 3 volt. Note that the joystick center terminal is pulled down to ground via a 10K resistor. Therefore, the default voltage on the joystick center terminal is zero. However, the other four joystick terminals are not pulled down. Most GPIO ports have 16 pins. This diagram shows the standard structure of one GPIO pin. It includes the basic structure for both digital input and digital output. In this lecture, I will only focus on the digital input. I have discussed the digital output in the previous lecture video. Let's quickly review GPIO output. There are four important registers related to output, including the output data register, the mode register, the data output type register, and the pull-up pull-down register. We can use the mode register to configure the function of the pin. If the pin is used as GPIO output, the mode bits should be 01. If the pin is used as GPIO input, the mode bits should be 00. The output type register sets the output pin as either push pull or open drain. The pull up pull down register specifies whether the pin is pulled up to a high voltage or the pin is pulled down to the ground. Again, here is the overall diagram of the GPIO module for one I.O. pin. In this lecture, we will only focus on GPIO input. Except the GPIO mode register, there are two other registers, which are related to GPIO input. They are the input data register, IDR, and the pull-up pull-down register, PUPDR. The input module includes one important electronic component, called, Schmidt trigger. The Schmidt trigger circuit is a special voltage comparator. It has two functions. First, it reduces noises, and provides a cleaner and more reliable signal. Second, it converts a slow signal edge, into a clean edge with instantaneous transition. Thus, it can increase the slew rate of signals. Let me explain the motivations of the Schmidt trigger. In practice, an analog signal often has electronic noise, introduced by various electronic components. 
the noise makes the signal fluctuate frequently. In addition, analog signal tends to rise or fall slowly, because of inherent parasitic capacitance, resistance, or induction in electronic circuits. Accordingly, analog signals tend to have small slew rates. The slew rate describes how fast a voltage changes. It is usually measured in volts per microsecond. Let's see what will happen if we use a simple comparator to convert the analog input signal to a binary digital signal. The simple comparator compares the input voltage with a predefined threshold. If the input is larger than the threshold, then the comparator outputs high level. Otherwise, the comparator outputs low level. Here is the output of the simple comparator. Different from the simple comparator, the Schmidt trigger is a special circuit, which switches the output, based on two different thresholds. They are called the trigger high threshold, and the trigger low threshold. The output of a Schmidt trigger depends on the current input, and the history of the input. When the input voltage increases from zero, the output remains low, until the input becomes larger than the high threshold. Similarly, when the voltage decreases gradually, the output remains high, until the input becomes smaller than the low threshold. Any fluctuation in the range between the high and low thresholds is ignored by the Schmidt trigger. This figure compares the output of the Schmidt trigger, and the simple comparator. When the input signal fluctuates slightly, the output of the Schmidt trigger does not switch its output level. For example, at the beginning, the output of Schmidt trigger is low. When the input signal fluctuates, the output remains low as long as the input signal is lower than the high threshold. Similarly, if the current output is high, even thought the input fluctuates, the output remains high as long as the input is higher than the low threshold. From this simple example, we can see that, the Schmidt trigger switches its output, much less frequently than the simple comparator. Accordingly, the Schmidt trigger helps eliminate noise in the input signal. As introduced in the lecture GPIO output, the clock of most peripherals, is turned off, in order to achieve the maximum energy efficiency. The joystick terminals are connected to five different pins in GPIO port A. First of all, we need to enable the clock of port A. The clock can be turned on, or turned off, by configuring the reset and clock control module, RCC. We need to set the GPIO A, enable bit to 1. When the GPIO A, enable bit is 1, the clock signal can pass through this, and, gate, to drive the port A. On the other hand, if the GPIO A, enable bit is 0, the output of the logic, and, is always 0. Accordingly. Port A has no clock input. Software can set the GPIO A, enable bit to 1 by using bitwise or. In order to make the code more readable, we use this macro to define this constant. In fact, this macro has already been defined in the device header file. Next, we need to program pin 0 of port A as digital input. The function of each pin is determined by two bits in the mode register. For example, bit 1 and bit 0 control the function of pin 0. When these two bits are 0, 0, the pin is set as digital input. Here is the C statement, which clears bit 1 and bit 0. This statement sets pin 0 of port A as digital input. When a GPIO pin is used for digital input, the default state of a pin can be high voltage, low voltage, or high impedance. The high impedance state is also called floating or tri-stated. Pull up and pull down are used to ensure the input pin has a valid input, either logic 1 or logic 0, when the external circuit does not drive the pin. When a pin is configured as pull down, the pin is then internally connected to the ground via a resistor. Similarly, when software configures a pin as pull-up, 
the pin is internally connected to the power supply via a resistor. When a pin is neither pulled up nor pulled down internally, then the pin has high impedance. Note that the internal pull up and pull down resistors have large impedance, typically large than 10k ohms. When external circuit, connected to a GPIO pin, has a fair amount of capacitance, the process of pulling the pin voltage to the level of logic high or logic low takes a long time. This is because the impedance of the internal pull up and pull down resistors is too large. To meet the speed requirements, external pull up or pull down with small resistors are often needed. Here is the C code that sets pin 0 as no pull up, no pull down. It clears bit 1 and bit 0 of the PUPDR register by bitwise and note that that pin 0 has already been pulled down externally. Therefore, we do not have to pull it down internally. The digital input is sampled every APB cycle. If the input is high, then the corresponding bit in the input data register IDR, is set. We can use a mask to read the read the individual bit of the input data register, as shown in this C code. For example, in order to read the input on pin 7, we first define a mask. Then, we use bitwise operation and we compare the bitwise result with the mask. If they are the same, the input on pin 7 is 1. Otherwise, the input is 0. This slide summarizes the software code, which read the input of the center switch of the joystick. Note that the center terminal of the joystick is connected to pin 0 of port A. The software involves four steps. First, we turn on the clock to enable port A. Then, we set the mode of pin 0 as digital input. Next, we select no pull up and no pull down for pin 0. Finally, we read bit 0 by using bitwise AND. If the bitwise result is 0, then the center of the joystick is not pressed. Otherwise, it is pressed. Please visit the book website for more examples and tutorials.